Francisco de Assis Pereira, born November 29, 1967, also known as O Maniaco do Parque. The Park Maniac is a Brazilian serial killer. He was arrested in 1998 for the rape and murder of 11 women and for assaulting nine others in a Sao Paulo park. Early life Francisco de Assis Pereira was born on November 29, 1967 in Sao Paulo. He experienced sexual trauma in his childhood, with a maternal aunt sexually harassing him, after which he developed a fixation on breasts. As an adult, he was seduced by his boss to engage in homosexual relationships. In one such relationship with a goth girl, the man almost ripped off Pereira's penis making him fear losing his reproductive organ. Pereira showed a darker side even before the murders. Thena, a travesti with whom he lived for more than a year, constantly reported that Francisco had punched her in the stomach and slapped in the face, just as some of the surviving women had reported. Because of the incident with the gothic man, he felt pain during the sexual act, and the impossibility of pleasure is suspect of being the reason for Pereira's murder spree. Investigation Prior to the investigation of the murders, Pereira had already been summoned to testify with the DHPP to clarify the use of a check sheet in the name of Isadora Frankel, which he had used for the purchase of a helmet. Having alleged the use of the check with Frankel's consent, she was not his girlfriend, but rather a randomly chosen victim. He was released soon after. At the time of the murders, Pereira worked as a moto boy at a company near the police station that investigated the crimes. The owner at the time reported the employee's strange attitude days before the DHPP's visit, and that he had left a note reporting of his sudden resignation and departure from the company. The day before the murderer made a slip when he approached a girl in the midst of her daily feeding routine of her psychosis, which he mentioned not being able to accompany him at that moment, fact had already occurred amidst massive investigations and mass media disclosures, his murders and the means of approaching the victims. This girl then notified that she had been given by the killer of a business card with the name of Jean, with the telephone number of the company where he worked and in case of interest in his proposal, that she would seek him out. This girl reported the incident to the DHPP, who immediately contacted the phone with the Moto Boys company she had previously investigated in response to the opposite side of the call. The owner then informed of Pereira's departure, leaving only the newspaper that showed his spoken picture, as well as a farewell message. Pereira was extroverted and convincing, leaving the victims to describe their present situation, usually of conflict in their relationships, to use this information for the conquest and conviction of the girls. He worked mainly in the metro, more frequently in the lines connected to the station of Jabaquera, where he approached his victims with the promise of participation in photo shoots of a large cosmetics company, usually focusing on women with apparent emotional discomfort, which the delinquent described as sad and head low, with apparent susceptibility to approaching strangers. When he disappeared, he only left a newspaper and a note on the table. He regretted having to leave, apologizing for the sudden action. My journey here has ended. Pereira found his victims by posing as a talent scout for a modeling agency. He would often use shoelaces to strangle his victims after raping them. Pereira worked as a motorcycle courier during the course of the crimes. Pereira was arrested on August 4, 1998 in Itaqui, Rio Grande do Sul ending a 23-day manhunt when he was reported to police after fisherman Joe Carlos Villaverde, who he was staying with, saw his picture on television. He also indicated the location of Selma's bones, which had not yet been found by the police in the state park. After being captured by the police, what most impressed the authorities was how an unarmed man could convince the women to climb the rump of a motorcycle and go into the middle of a thicket with a man they had just met. Today the killer is a record holder receiving letters at the prison. The convict even married an admirer, having separated later times with reports of the ex-bride, of strangeness in his actions and personality. 
Premier will be released in 2028 after completing the maximum 30 years of seclusion required by Brazilian law, and noted psychiatrists indicate the certainty that he will commit another offense due to his pseudo-psychopathic, irreversible state of mind. Murders Elias Angela Francisco da Silva Elias Angela Francisco da Silva was a 21-year-old from Parana, coming from a poor Londrina family, who had been living with her aunt Solange Barbosa in Sao Paulo since 1996. Due to financial difficulties, she left school in the seventh grade. After being left by a friend at the El Dorado Mall in the west zone of Sao Paulo, she was never seen again. Her naked body was found on July 28th in the state park. The already decomposed body required hard work so it could be identified, and she was identified only three days later. I hope it was not her. Her aunt said, on the day of her disappearance, Eliza Angela left home saying that she would return in two hours. Raquel Moda Rodriguez The great ambition of 23-year-old Raquel Moda Rodriguez was to earn money to help her family, who lived in Gravitae, Rio Grande do Sul. On weekends, she went out to bars with three friends, never going after midnight. Around 8 o'clock on the night of January 9th, she left the furniture store where she worked as a saleswoman, in the Pinheiros neighborhood. Upon arriving at the Jabuquera station, Almost at home, she called her cousin Ligia, saying that she had met a young man and accepted his offer of posing as a model for him in Diadema, Sao Paulo. Her cousin warned her not go, saying it was too risky to go out with a stranger. Raquel replied that she won't go, but never returned home. Her body was found in the thicket of the state forest on January 16th. Selma Ferreira Quieras Quieras was a minor and the youngest of three sisters, intending to study accounting or computer science. Her plans, however, were cut short in the afternoon of July 3rd. She disappeared in the area between her house in Kosha and center of Sao Paulo, where she would deal with the formalities related to her dismissal as a drugstore clerk. The next day, a man called Sarah. Selma's sister, claiming that the girl had been kidnapped and asked for a ransom of 1,000 reais. He said that he called back later that afternoon, but he didn't. That same day, Selma's body was found in the state park. She was naked, with signs of rape and beating. Bite marks were also found on shoulders, breasts and legs. Selma had been strangled. A little bit after she had informed her boyfriend that she wouldn't be able to come in time to watch the 1998 FIFA World Cup with him, but was on the way to his residence. Patricia Goncalves Marinho at the age of 24, Marinho had never revealed to her family that she had dreamed of being a model. On April 17, after leaving the house of her grandmother Josefa, with whom she lived, the girl disappeared. Her body was discovered on July 28th in a deserted area of the state park. Identification of the body was only possible thanks to the clothes and jewelry found next to the body. She was raped and then strangled to death. Letters The famous murderer received several letters from admirers in jail, including the following. I do not know what to do to distract you, but I have an idea. First I want to say that I want you every night. It's very good. I think you're hot, fiery. You're close to me, inside my heart. After I get home, I want your body and soul, to love you. I want you anyway. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Do not lose hope, believe in God, because someday we will meet. I know of your sick behavior, so I want you to be calm, for now. Our kisses are like this. But I really want to kiss you. I think you miss her. I love you, I love you, I love you, etc. I want you, I want you body and soul. And forgive me for everything I'm suffering. You know Francie so, I do not settle, and I cry. And I need to be strong. I want to tell you that I'm dying for longing, wanting you. Oh my God, how I wish you every night. I sleep alone and want you here. But I know it's impossible.
It's okay for me to go see you. And how can I feel? What is mine? Francisco, do not let the sadness take care of you and end the glitter of your gaze. Believe in God, you are not and you will never be alone. Jesus loves you, your mother and your father too, and especially I, after everything happened, I tried to end my life, another super interesting thing had to happen, I thought a lot and I had hopes, believe the world goes round, when people least expect something good always happens. The journalist and writer Gilmar Rodriguez published in 2009 the book, Lucas de Amor, Women Who Love Serial Killers and Sexual Criminals, editorial, Ideas of Bulk, where he tried to understand why the maniac was wanted by so many women. He was impressed by the 1,000 letters of love the felon received a month after he was arrested in 1998. Sentence and aftermath he was eventually sentenced to a total of 268 years in prison. Pereira would go on to say, I was possessed by an evil force. And, I am a person with a good and a bad personality. Sometimes I am not able to dominate this dark side. I pray, I pray, but I cannot resist and then I chase after women. I wish that they would not go with me into the park, that they would run away. After being caught he claimed he was about to start cannibalizing his victims. On December 18, 2000, inmates tried to kill Pereira during a riot at the Top 8 House of Custody and psychiatric treatment and four inmates were killed. Pereira was then moved to another psychiatric facility. He had said that he considers himself a normal person, and that, according to him, he is alive because of his faith. Pereira also claimed that what he had done in the past would not have been a result of his own will, but of an evil thing, damn it. He met his current wife Josera through letters while imprisoned, with her trying to solve his legal problems. She is intelligent, has a great background and a degree in history and geography, he boasted. An IBOP survey for the Public Prosecutor's Office in 2004 showed that this case is most remembered by Brazilians, with a 76% index, the most remembered police case between 2006 and 2007. References Bibliography Luisa Alcalda and Luis Carlos dos Santos, Hunt for the Park Maniac. Sao Paulo. Editora Escritura, 2000.